Hey folks, welcome back to another video. And today it's about Scalar EQ that you can see in the background here. It's a new plugin. I saw a video of this yesterday and I thought maybe I'd talk a bit about it. Uh, the idea about this EQ is basically that you can't just put frequencies everywhere. Um, you can select the scale, as you can see in the background here, A minor, C major, and then all the frequencies you pick are basically on the scale. So the frequency is a note, right? And the note is in the scale you're choosing here at the top. So it's basically a quantizer for the frequencies. And yeah, all the frequencies are basically within a scale. I think this only makes sense if you choose very steep uh, frequency cuts or frequency boosts, like something like this here, right? Um, where you have almost like uh, self-resonating tones. Um, if you choose more broad frequency um, ranges, right? If, if you make just, you know, a big, a big belly here and boost that, I think it doesn't make any sense because, you know, the frequencies are so broad um, that you can't hear basically if you are one or two hertz below or beneath the uh, frequency of a note. It doesn't only make sense, in my opinion, if you have very, very steep cuts here or um, very precise boosts. So the big question is, can you replicate this inside of Bitwig Studio? The quick answer is yes, you can technically. Um, the only downside is, as always in Bitwig Studio, you can't replicate uh, the interface. And the interface is most of the times for most plugins, 80% of the appeal, you know, that you can see what you are doing, that you see what's going on, that it looks nice and easy to get and so on. So that's what you can't replicate. Uh, but technically what's going on behind the scenes, that's something you can replicate. So here we have basically a drum loop. And you can just put an EQ on that. Um, so let's use here, oh, it's the wrong channel. Um, let's put an EQ plus on there. And you can EQ everything here. Right, you can see, you can choose basically every frequency here. Uh, but you can always type in, you can say, I want to EQ everything that's um, C major, right? So C major is basically all the white keys. If you go down here, you see it's F sharp four. So F sharp four is not in the key of um, C major. So you go, so go to F four, right? So this is in the key. Um, so now we have the frequency of F four, which is in the key. So you can always EQ like that. If you want to, you can go down here and just type in a note. Um, D3, for instance, is also in the key of C ma major because all the white keys, right? So you deselect basically everything that's a sharp, um, uh, that has a sharp in it. Um, like I said here, if you have this broad EQ boost, something, something like that, um, it actually doesn't matter um, if you are a few hertz off or you know not on a note because you can't hear it it's just a lot of frequencies you're boosting here at the same time it only makes sense if you have very steep boosts or cuts then it maybe makes sense even with this here you know with this Q setting you have probably three or four notes at the same time here um, to the left and to the right that you are still boosting. So you're boosting multiple nodes at the same time, not only one. So you need to have very steep cuts and boosts here to only uh, affect one node or one frequencies of uh, one frequency alone. Um, so here type in C3, right? So you land exactly on C3 and you can do this with multiple things and so on. So this is basically the easiest way to do this, to just use um, inputs for the EQ. You can also use EQ uh, 5 here for that if you want to. You can also type in C3, right? And then use it this way. Um, another way would be to use the grid. Um, FX, grid FX grid. And in here we can use an XP filter. Um, disable the pre-chord for the 
yeah for the uh, pitch the pitch pre-chord and then go here to peak and peak is basically um peak is basically something like this EQ5. so this is a peak um there is an band pass here band pass basically removes everything above and below it looks like this um so this would be a band pass right um it only passes basically what's what's selected in here but the peak one um looks like this it's just it's just a boost and you can change how much you bo boost by using uh, this resonance um knob um you can also do a notch steep cut that's basically something like this i think a notch is basically it, it goes to zero here it completely removes everything uh, so it's not working like a peak it's more or less like an um yeah it's also not an inverted band pass it's hard to describe but it's basically cutting everything out here in the middle there's basically zero audio at exactly this frequency so you can only use peak here um to make positive boosts um so with this you can basically just uh, put this here to uh, C3, 262 hertz, and then you go to a quantizer, of course, right? And you say you want to select uh, C major or A minor, put this in there, use a value, uh, maybe you use your bipolar, and you start basically at C3 here, and then you can move the EQ up or down and boost here so um, let's try this out how this sounds now oh, we can also use the readout here and put this into semitones mode you can see we boost basically e5 um so that's that i think we can also get the frequency out here of this let me see um so pitch the frequency so we have here basically um 1.3 k hertz uh kilohertz that we boost here at this moment Okay, then we can say we want to use uh, voice stacking here. Go to two voices, two voice stacks, and use stack spread here, and say this is manual mode. Uh, put this here back, and then let's go here to 100%. And this is basically the frequency. We duplicate this, also manual, and then we change this here to resonance. 100% and we call this resonance so now we have basically on the left side I don't know why they move this from here from an extended panel to the inspector but it's how it is in beta 5 um, so now you you have to rely on um, yeah on this interface here and you have to switch between the two before we could just expand here these uh, voice or the stack spread modulators expand basically the panels and have two panels uh, next to each other now we have to switch between the two so frequency here so you can change one frequency here and then you change the re resonance here frequency here resonance here Um, it's probably good to bring the volume down here by minus 6 dB because we layer the input sound twice. So we have to compensate here a bit. I really hope they bring back here these extended panels um, for the manual mode. I think this is not a great way of editing uh, stuff here, you know. You have to switch it between two of them. Um, yeah, I don't know. So uh, we can increase the voice text, of course. 
the 10. Ah, that's okay. So we can change our multiple frequencies. Everything is basically here going through this pitch quantizer. Um, yeah. And then you can edit a bit of resonance everywhere. Then you can create kind of a resonator almost. And it's not a resonator because we don't use bandpass filters. Every frequency is basically in the scale of uh, C major. So, like I said, uh, it's not very hard to do this inside of Bitwig Studio just with the quantizer here and the filter. Um, but the interface, you know, you can't replicate the interface. It's always the same thing in, inside of Bitwig to give basically the user um, a nice easy to understand interface and you know to see for yourself what what's actually going on where do you eq and where do you need to eq but technically not a problem so um that's it for this video thanks for watching leave a like subscribe to the channel see you in the next video bye